Hello, good evening, and welcome. You've just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin, and uh, we've got a really amazing week lined up for you. Oh, uh, one point of information, as they say. The former Archbishop of Canterbury, Lord George Carey, was meant to be here uh, today on this show Wednesday now. There have been some major issues developing in the United Kingdom, so he really had to postpone. He was very apologetic, uh, but he'll be here on Wednesday. Now, this weekend, the legendary singer and film star Whitney Houston died. It appeared that she drowned, we don't know, alone in a bathtub, having accidentally overdosed on a cocktail of prescription drugs and alcohol after two back-to-back -back evenings of out-of-control binges. We just don't know. It could have been drugs on themselves, whatever. Obviously, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that anybody should die in such a way at, at such an age, but I can't help wondering why it is that we discriminate, that we are so selective in our passion and compassion, that we are so emotionally bigoted. Look, here was a woman with amounts of money most people could only imagine, with material comforts and benefits beyond the dreams of, of most in North America, let alone men and women in the third world. She was also beautiful and talented. So the fact that she embraced and surrendered to a cocaine habit, while terrible, of course, must be put in context. Now, ask yourself how much time and concern you give, I give, to an inner-city kid who develops a drug habit, but because he's not a millionaire like Whitney, he commits a crime. Now, throw away the key, we shout. Point taken, but whereas that poor bugger had few, if any, supports, the Hollywood parasites have nothing but Roman Polanski, Kiefer Sutherland, Charlie Sheen, Lindsay Lohan, Paris Hilton, Nicole Rishi, Winona Ryder, and on and on and on and on. The rap singers, the movie directors, the actors, the, the overpaid sportsmen, the drunks, the junkies, the pornographers, the rapists, the thieves, the thugs. But we find ways to explain or forgive and even allow them a degree of glamour and sexy notoriety because of their crimes. Uh, then, if they offer some political opinion, we assume it has a particular significance because, well, it's mouthed by a mediocrity who can pout while delivering a line. Whitney, you and your friends give in and give up while real normal people don't have that privilege and can't afford such an indulgence. They have families, responsibilities, bills to pay. Look, it goes further. Consider Princess Diana. A Kennedy, any celebrity who dies, we pretend to care, we pretend to feel. Good God, we don't know these people. Those we do know, who work close and live next to us, we often ignore and sometimes even despise. I'll never forget the case of the woman in England who camped out for three days during Princess Diana's funeral because she wanted to show her grief. It turned out that her next-door neighbor, next door, had been dead a day before, and she wasn't found for another week until the smell of decay was noticed. The death of community, the death of common sense. You see, if we want genuine glamour and excitement and fulfillment, it's all around us, and we don't have to look to California, anything but California, to provide it. Have you called your elderly relative lately? Have you had a conversation, even a brief one, with that guy on the corner who always asks if you've got any spare money? They'll never appear on a big stage, never produce an album, never make the headlines. That's what makes them much, much, much more interesting than a movie felon or a broken singer. Sorry, I can't sing it to you, but it's still true.